Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Season 2, Episode 1. Dr. Michael Cargreg. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to a special edition of the Mac Connections podcast. We did this podcast during the last period of remote learning, believe it or not, about 12 months ago. Today, we've got a really special guest and we've got Michael Carr Gregg. Now, Michael Carr Gregg is a leading psychologist. He's an author of 14 books and really focuses on the key issues around mental health for young people, families, parenting, and the use of technology. And with us today, we've got Alex Dalton, our college captain, and Ebony Hanson, who's really responsible for being able to bring Michael to us today. Michael, thanks so much for coming along, and we really appreciate your time. Um, first question from me, we've, we've had 87 days of zero transmission and zero community transmission, and in many of our minds, this period of remote learning or the period of um, COVID was behind us, and all of a sudden we find ourselves back in this period, and it seems to me that the greatest challenge is dealing with the uncertainty, not of not just of now, but also if things like this happen going forward. Have you got any advice for, for young people and for parents as to how they navigate the uncertainty of these periods, not just now, but into the future? Great question. So, um, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Ebony, you're a star. Alex, nice to meet you. Um, I reckon that there is no doubt that this is disappointing. But I would say to young people that disappointment is kind of like a practice lap for adulthood because nothing ever necessarily goes the way that you want it to. So it's a really good lesson to learn early on that sometimes things just don't work out. So my advice to young people is to draw a circle and inside that circle, and it's just like a metaphor, um, you need to put all the things in your life that you can control. So Ebony and Alex have control over how much they slept last night, what they ate, um, how much exercise they do, um, their attitude towards the people around them, whether or not they made an effort to use technology to reach out socially. So all of those things are within their control. Outside of the circle, I think we should put the things that we can't control, like, for example, whether we have to go into lockdown, whether or not people decide to wear their masks, whether or not people decide to get vaccinated. All of these things are beyond our control. And I always say, look, there are some things that are so heavy that it's best just to let them go. And if you do that, then you can concentrate on the building blocks of your well-being, which have always been sleep, diet, exercise, and being social. So that's my number one message. Ebony? Yeah, no, I think that makes a lot of sense. You focus on the things that are like in the centre. Um, but I think as well, a lot of the students are um, wondering, especially with all this change, how to get the most out of their studying. Uh, so like what's the best way to study and if so, what you suggest, suggest is insufficient or um, what do you believe is the best way to study? Okay, so everybody is different. 
um, you represent 23 chromosomes from your mum, 23 from your dad. We throw in the genetic roll of the dice, throw in your environment. Yeah, throw in your environment. And you're not a carbon copy of mum. You're not a carbon copy of dad. You are unique. You are like um, a thumbprint. It's unique. There's no, never ever going to be another Ebony um, Hansen. You are it. Okay. So everybody learns in different ways. There's some general principles of learning that we know from psychology. So um, I reckon the most important thing is for you to study in 20 minute blocks of time. And then you mm -hmm. take a little five minute break and then you do another 20 minutes and then you do five minutes and then 20. The human brain is not designed to absorb large amounts of information at once. And I think a mistake that some students can make from time to time is they can study for a huge amount of time and they don't actually recall what it is that they want wanted to learn. Second really important um, message I've got around study is what I call the uh, production effect. So way back in 2010, a bunch of psychologists um, under the leadership of a guy called Colin McLeod made an amazing discovery. And that is that one of the best ways to remember information was to actually um, either read it, write it down, draw it, whatever, any way that you can to sort of get it in the front, in the, into short term memory. And then you basically put down whatever it is that you wrote down to remember it. And you walk around the house saying it out loud. Now, obviously you wouldn't want to be walking around the streets talking to yourself because a lot of people would go, are you all right? <laughs> but as long as you let everybody know, this is actually a really good principle of learning that not a lot of people heard about. So we've got the 20 minute rule and the talking out loud rule. I think these two things are absolutely awesome. Okay. Uh, and the third piece of advice that I would give is that you will always do your best study if you have your brain in a state where it is hydrated. So you've got to drink water because your brain is about 82% water. Secondly, you have to make sure that you have fed your brain because you're interesting. Your brain has a design defect, all our brains do. And that is that it doesn't store energy. The sole source of energy for your brain is in fact glucose. And glucose comes from carbohydrates. But the problem is your brain is a little bit like a petrol tank. It uses it, doesn't store it. So you've got to keep replenishing it. So if you want to study, you've got to drink water, you've got to eat food, and there are specific foods that I recommend. And thirdly, you've got to make sure that you get enough sleep because the average young person requires somewhere between um, nine to 10 hours sleep, particularly if you're doing year 12, because in deep sleep, your brain takes all the stuff that it's learned in short term memory. And the longer you spend the sleep drops it off in a part of your brain, which is long term memory, which is what you need for recall. So that in a nutshell, are the three most important pieces of advice I'd give you. Great awesome. question, by the way. Thank Alex? you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great to get these study tips, but how how do you motivate yourself to actually start studying and yeah. get the ball rolling? And uh -huh. So motivation is pretty hard to come by in lockdown because um, you don't normally, you don't have the cues that normally motivate you to, to study. So the general principles of motivation that we, as psychologists look at. First of all, is to ask you, what is your long-term goal? What is it that you want to get out of this year? And if it's just to finish, fine. For some people, it's a specific ATAR. Um, 
For other people, it's, it's something else. It's individual. The most important thing is that you have that goal. And what I do is I grab one of those post-it notes and I write that goal up and I put it on uh, my mirror or my window. And every single day when I get up, that goal is there. So the goal is one thing. The second thing is to then figure out what do I need to do to achieve my goals? And there may be specific things that you need to do to make sure that you um, begin the journey. Now, a lot of people say to me, but it's really hard in lockdown. You know, you can have your goals and you, you can have your steps to reach them, but how do I get going? So here's the latest piece of research. There's this um, wonderful thing, which is called fake it till you make it. So I say they, that all the time. <laughs> oh, it works. It works. So what you do is you pretend, you know, like the Truman Show, that Alex is basically the number one uh, cast member in a show that everybody's watching, that you are essentially being observed by a group of people. And what's interesting is that if you pretend that people are watching you and you go, okay, so what all these people watching me, I am actually now going to study. So you pretend to, to start on the study journey. And what the research shows is if you can fake it for 10 minutes, you actually keep going. And so it's that whole, where do I get the motivation to start? So if you're the star of a show, got to be there every time so every um every wednesday at quarter to 11 for the last 17 years without fail i have had a contract to turn up to 3aw radio station at quarter to 10 and sorry quarter to 11 and i've got to be there and i've got to be interviewed by the the guy on the radio neil mitchell and I've got to come up with every single Wednesday at six o'clock in the morning, three subjects for him to choose from. And then I have to basically, he, he lets me know or his producer lets me know which of the three subjects he's suggested. And I've just got to do it. And, and it is a discipline. And it's something that if I stop doing, they go, oh, thank you very much. Goodbye. Um, this Sunday, I'm doing um, uh, Sunrise. I've been doing Sunrise for 15 years. So I've been doing Sunrise on Channel 7 for longer than um, Mel Doyle or Samantha Armitage. So I have outlived wow. both of them. So the only one who's still there is Proshi. And I've been doing it for a long time. But <laughs> the, the point is it's a discipline, okay? Yeah. So you're only ever as good as your last performance. And if you don't turn up ready and knowledgeable and well-researched, you're finished. You've gone. Michael, I'm going to ask a question from a parent's perspective now, actually, from uh, Ebony's mum. I think there's not a parent who sets out on the year 12 journey or the senior school journey with their kids that doesn't want them to do their best. But I think sometimes we as parents need to understand that our anxiety or our fears or our our emotions with regards to that journey can rub off on our sons and daughters. How do we as parents make sure that we don't make it more than what it is? We don't put more pressure on our young people as they go through this journey than what is already what they're already feeling. How can we help as parents to make sure that we're not really um, contributing to the stresses, I suppose, of finishing senior school? Great question, Andrew. First thing is to make sure that we understand what I call the developmental perspective. So the, the, the really interesting thing is if I look at Ebony and I look at Alex, and I know that they have 100 billion brain cells. I know they've got, um, like if I stretch them out, Alex's brain cells would go around the world four and a half times. Amazing. Did you know that, Alex? Yes. You did know that? I well, think, I, yeah. okay. I think you're lying, but that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. Um, <laughs> the interesting thing is that 
you've also got um, a thousand trillion connections and they're not wired up yet. So what parents have to recognize is that their brains are all wired up and a developmental perspective means recognizing that young people's brains are a work in progress. So young people are influenced by a couple of things. The first is the overwhelming desire of young people in year 12 is to be with their friends. That is absolutely a, a law, okay? Yeah, so for parents, sure. parents have to recognize that um, locking them in the room, nailing them to the floor, and not letting them socialize is a really bad idea. The second thing they have to recognize is that their brain um, is wired for novelty and risk. So young people do not think of um, effort and outcome in the same way that adults do. So the major message for parents is to recognize that young people are not mini adults. They're young people. They're completely unique. They've got a young person's brain and a developmental perspective takes that into account. The third thing parents need to recognize is young people are great imitators. So we've got to give them something good to imitate, which is we as adults should role model a really clear message. And that is that all we want is effort. You are not your ATAR. Life will still be worth living irrespective of the score that you get. So a constant message from those adults should be, we will provide you with the circumstances to do your very best, but we're gonna have a developmental perspective. We're gonna recognize you wanna be with your friends, recognize your brain doesn't work the same way that adults do. Does that make sense, Alex? Yeah. Yeah, we'll have, it does. We'll We'll have a, one more question from Ebony and one more question from Alex and then we'll wrap it up. Ebony, what would you like to add? Um, well, I know a lot of my friends um, and I know particularly at school, we're not allowed to work with music. And um, I know at home, obviously everyone, it's everyone's preference whether they study with music and what kind of music they listen to, if music works for them. So, well, as you said, everyone's different. Uh, so would you recommend doing like using music to help you study or just have it in the background or what what's your opinion on music when it comes to studying i love it when people ask me questions that i know the answers to so there's, <laughs> there's just been a study by a guy called dr byron and i remembered his name because of the poet lord byron and he's at the university of wollongong and dr byron's just done this study and what he found was that the answer to your question is Unfortunately, it depends. So he's discovered that some people can listen to music and it doesn't impact on their capacity to study at all. Whereas other people, um, particularly those with an introverted personality, are really distracted by um, music. So who knew that your personality is actually one of the factors that, it, that decides whether or not you can listen to music. The other factor that he talked about, and he did an experiment using um, Taylor Swift's song, which is kind of unfortunate, um, uh, Shake It Off. And you know the Shake It Off sound? I know, sorry, <laughs> Alex, forgive him. Um, but he used this and, and he played the music. And what he discovered is that when the music is very fast and but typically kind of like um, poppy music that some people get very distracted by that That's whereas me. other people can listen to um, music without a, a sort of very fast pace and without lyrics and that works fine for them so it depends upon your personality and it depends on what works for you great question Ebony okay thank you very Alex? insightful yeah I mean sort of looping back a little bit uh, from a student's perspective, how am I meant to manage my personal life and my school and study life? Where, where do the lines get drawn in the sand between spending 10 hours a night studying to going out with my friends? Okay, so I believe that um, the greatest 
and most important word for any student doing year 12 is balance. So you have to balance your work requirements with your social requirements. So my rule would be, and it certainly was my two sons, is that is you can go out on Friday night and have a good, a fine time. You can go out on Saturday, you're going to either play sport or do whatever you need to do. And you can even go out on a Saturday night. But Sunday, that's the day that you reserve for study. So and would you, sorry, just would you recommend part-time jobs as well? Or? Oh, there's research on that, Ebony. There is research on that. And that is um, up to 12 hours a week didn't affect anyone's ATAR. But over 12 hours of part-time study did. And this was a study done at the Royal Children's Hospital when I was there. So okay. great question. Michael, it's been fantastic to listen to your insight. And I think um, to provide a little bit of a context for this conversation, I think it is well worth noting that um, Ebony and her mum read your book around surviving year 12 last year during lockdown. And actually, this instigated our conversation with you and, and them reaching out has enabled us to, to have you for a brief time today, which we really do appreciate. I think um, the thing that you provide insight around is the fact that sometimes the the choices that we need that students need to make at year 12 seem insurmountable and really large but it seems to me that it's a series of little choices it's a, a series of little decisions that all come together to actually mean that the package and means that your success is going to be able to be sustained and I think you've broken it down into a whole lot of little manageable things that students and parents can do today that will support them during the period. So we really do thank you. I think um, there's a quote in your Year Surviving Year 12 book from um, Howard Kelly, who used to be the, the Victorian head of the Board of Studies, and he talks about um, understanding that ATARs and VCEs are only one step along the journey, and you've got to maintain balance. And I think that word for me is something that really um, comes to fruition and really means something for our students. So we thank you so much for today and Alex and Ebony for your time. And um, right. we hope that this information just goes a little bit along the way to helping our year 12 students achieve their personal best results I for the rest of this me. year. Thank you very much. Thank no you. Worries. My pleasure, guys. Thank you very much, Ebony. That's hey. all right. It's been lovely keeping in contact with you and finally meeting you. <laughs> oh, it's, it's good. It's a shame we couldn't do it face to face, but we made it in the end. Alex, thanks uh, very much. And Andrew, thanks for facilitating this. No worries, and yeah. thanks for your time, Michael. Take care. Take care. Bye bye. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions, or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.